Through nine games in these playoffs, I feel pretty confident in saying that Devin Booker is putting on the greatest display of shot making I've personally ever seen. There are a seemingly endless amount of numbers you can place on his performance, and although they may be off the charts, even those can feel like they aren't quite doing him justice. Take his averages over those 9 games for example. He is leading the postseason in both scoring volume and efficiency at about 37 points per game on 71% true shooting. He's hit 51% of his threes, 60% of his mid-range shots, and 73% of his attempts within 10 feet of the basket. This is truly something we've never seen before in the history of the NBA. Yet still, despite setting that ridiculous standard, after going down 0-2 in Denver, he's been able to turn up to another level over the past two games, averaging 41.5 points on 79% from the field, 67% from three, and 89% true shooting. And it's not like that scoring production is being juiced by free throws either, only attempting four a game. In those matchups, he's hit 20 out of 26 of his jump shots, just under 77%, and it's not like these are easy looks. As he isolates against Jeff Green from the top of the key, Bruce Brown comes over to double, so he just rises over the top of both with a pull-up triple. This time in the painted area, he's unable to sell Green with an up fake, so he's smothered while falling back off of one leg, and it drops without much room for error. While some of his offensive mastery during this run can be attributed to unholy shot making, there's still a great process behind his attack. One point of emphasis has been playing with pace, and getting out in transition as much as possible. For years now, he's been one of the best and in my opinion underrated fast break scorers in the game, but that's been upped by more than a few notches. During the regular season, he averaged about 4 fast break points a game. In the playoffs, that's gone up to over 7, and in the last 2, an astonishing 13 and a half. Off of a defensive rebound, he makes himself readily available to get the ball and start his push patiently reading the defense downhill, and countering strong defensive pressure with a spin that gives him a lane all the way to the cup. This time he's got a bit more speed as he looks to drive, but Denver does a good job of not giving up an easy gap, so he instead slams the brakes for a real quality floater. He just has so many different ways of scoring in the open floor. Instead of leaking out, notice as he waits to get the ball so he can start the break himself turning on the Jets to beat Jokic, and again stopping on a dime for a little push shot from the line. It's not just the paint he's looking to get to, but also the three-point line. He takes a wide route to the outside as Durant pushes, where there's nobody in position to prevent him from setting his feet and showing off that picture-perfect jump shot. One primary criticism of his game over the past couple years is that he could be a bit reliant on jumpers for a large majority of his scoring, and lacked the ability to really get into the defense like some other star creators, but recently he's really been looking to pressure the paint in the half court. Because he lacks a super explosive first step, instead of slashing from a standstill, he'll utilize the space he's given as an initiator to seek out little gaps in the defense as he builds up steam. Jokic is keyed in on Ayton as he looks to set an off-ball screen for Durant, and Booker notices this, so he explodes down the middle of the lane where he gets to the rim for a goaltending call. Here it is again first faking a drive down the middle with a hesitation that he throws straight into a crossover and protecting the ball as he embraces contact to finish through it plus the foul. When a lack of ball pressure gives him that much space to work with, there's just no way to dictate which direction he drives, and he'll exploit that with little pauses and timely strides to get in close. This is that same hanging hesitation dribble that he can go left or right out of, and easily beats KCP off the bounce for a little 5 foot floater. With the threat of him using that hesitation to get to the paint, it helps open up the perimeter, 
Murray's expecting a drive towards the middle and backpedals, but Booker instead steps right into a pull-up triple. This is a move he's completely mastered. He's building up some speed as he gets into the hezzy, and by the time he decelerates into that high-release jumper, there's just no way to get a solid contest. Booker's perimeter shot creation in these last two games has been off the charts. Again, notice how Murray's giving him a little space to play the empty side drive, which he leverages into an off-the-dribble elbow J. Here's the exact same thing once more using in and out dribbles and hesitations to keep KCP guessing, which creates more than enough space for the mid-range assassin. He's just got so much versatility, this time with his back to the basket, working his way in deep, before spinning into a layup with some beautiful footwork like a skilled big man. He's been initiating quite a bit in the high pick and roll as well. Brown chases him over a screen, while Jokic isn't up at the level to meet him, so it's a stop and pop triple. He's just too good a shooter to give any breathing room coming off of screens. Durant's just one pass away, so Gordon can't really offer much help, as he works his way to that right wing for a fadeaway jumper. As a result, Denver's pretty much forced to put two guys on the ball, either in a trap or hedge to which Booker's consistently made the right reads. While his scoring has gotten the buzz, don't let it go unnoticed that he's averaged 10.5 assists over these past two, just generating an absurd amount of offense for his team. While double teams used to speed him up, look at how patient he is when probing with that live dribble, waiting for Ayton to seal deep position under the basket for an easy entry and three-point play. With Jokic up at the top of the key in that hedge, by taking one extra dribble, that forces KCP into a two-on-one situation, looking to Landale on a roll as he kicks it to the corner, which leaves Warren with a wide-open corner three. He's also been making those sharp pocket passes when they're available. Nobody comes up to meet Aiton, so it's a real easy short roll drive and dunk. This time it's a staggered pick and roll, with Jamal Murray defending as the low man, so once that pocket pass is made, it's just too much of a size advantage. Here Jokic comes up in that hedge, and positions himself well to not give up an angle to Ayton on the roll, while KCP slides down to prevent a lob, so Booker takes an extra dribble, and kicks it to a lifting Terrence Ross, who knocks it down above the break. Book's pressure as a driver has allowed him to draw in the defense while attacking. Again, Kevin Durant is just one pass away on the wing, so when Gordon slides down to the nail to take away the middle, that's just way too easy for Phoenix. And here's the exact same thing, except this time Gordon closes out hard, so Katie puts it down and steps into a much easier jumper from the free throw line. I can't stress enough how insane it is to leave KD open just one pass away, but that's the type of fear Booker has put on this Denver defense, seeing two bodies right away, with nobody to contest a warm-up triple. The Nuggets have tried trapping Book to get the ball out of his hands, but again he's continuously made the right reads to either create an open shot, or put the defense into rotation with an advantage for his team to attack. With KCP and MPJ trapping all the way out at half court, Phoenix is playing 4 on 3, and Josh Akogi wastes no time putting it down for a real easy finish at the rim. Late in the shot clock, Gordon rotates over to double, and with KD one pass away, Murray slides over from the corner, leaving open a skip pass to Shamit, who's all alone on an island. When it's Durant on the ball, drawing that aggressive coverage, Booker is able to attack one on one, and that's just too effortless for a scorer of his caliber. I've always believed that one of his greatest traits as a player is that while he can do so much with the ball, he's just as effective without it, not taking anything off the table from guys around him. His decisiveness off the catch has been huge, and helps him create both easier driving lanes and more space on pull-up jumpers. KD draws two to the ball off a screen, and when the ball gets swung to Booker, he immediately steps into a one-dribble pull-up from the elbow. 
it's so much harder for a defender to offer help and stay in front of a guy who's attacking off the catch with that much speed. Out of an inbounds play, Booker fakes a handoff that Brown bites on with nobody remaining to take away that routine mid-range jumper. Durant draws a double in the post with Book one pass away, who slashes without hesitation to beat a closeout off the bounce before slamming the brakes for one of those patented paint pull-ups. So, he's creating for himself in both the open floor and in the half court, from all three levels, both on and off the ball, while making all the right reads as a playmaker. And even if the defense is picture perfect, his shot making has been off the charts. And as long as this continues, he's a pretty unsolvable problem that the Denver Nuggets have to find a way to limit if they want to win this series. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn my post notifications on to be first on more content. If you're interested in my more in-depth research, make sure to check out my website and social media profiles. You can find those links in the description. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you think of Booker and what your predictions are for the rest of this series. As always, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.